Hello class, this is our second unit on pronouns and um, so you'll need your English book and if you turn to page 302 that's where we'll be today. I'll give you a few minutes to find that. Uh, you will need to follow along in the book because I'm just reading the book to you and trying to explain as we go along. So please have your book open to page 302. Today we are talking about pronoun antecedents. Now an antecedent is just a word that the, in the sentence that the pronoun refers to. So if I say, um, I'm going to give Mr. Lee his haircut, well, his is the pronoun in that sentence, but who is he? Who does his refer to? It refers to Mr. Lee. So, Mr. Lee is the antecedent for the pronoun his. It's the word in the sentence that the pronoun refers to. So that's basically all this lesson is. It should be fairly easy, but there are a few things we need to look over. All right, so let's look on page 302. Uh, at the top, I'm just reading right under where it says agreement with antecedents. You know that a pronoun takes the place of a noun. We saw that in the last lesson. Shane spoke to the audience. He read the news. He is a pronoun that takes the place of the noun Shane. Number one, the noun that the pronoun replaces is called an antecedent. The prefix ante means before, and the root seed means go. An antecedent usually goes before a pronoun and names the person, place, or thing to which the pronoun refers. Sometimes the antecedent is in an earlier sentence. Here are some example sentences. The radio is old, but it works well. It is the pronoun in the sentence. The antecedent, the word that it refers to, is radio. So we know when we say it what it is. Lucas listened to his radio. His is the pronoun in the sentence. Its antecedent is Lucas. Who is he? Lucas. The speakers should be on the shelf. Are they there? They is the pronoun. What is they? The speakers. The antecedent is the speakers. The tapes were left uncovered. Are they dusty? They is the pronoun, and the antecedent for they is the tapes. Number two. The antecedent does not always go before the pronoun. Sometimes the antecedent comes after the pronoun. Here's the example sentence. Although she was late, the announcer walked slowly. She is our pronoun, and in this sentence, the antecedent is after the word she. So we know she means the announcer. Number three. The antecedent of one pronoun may be another pronoun. By seven o'clock, I had turned off my radio. My, in this, in this case, is the pronoun and its antecedent refers to I. Number four. A pronoun must always agree with its antecedent in number and in person. A pronoun that is in third person singular must agree with its antecedent in gender as well. Let's look at the example sentences. Third person singular, masculine. Keith finished his work. Well, we wouldn't say Keith finished her work because Keith is a guy. So. We have to make it agree. His agrees with Keith. Feminine. Evelyn completed her assignment too. It's her because Evelyn's a girl. We wouldn't say Evelyn completed his assignment. And then neuter. When it's neither masculine or feminine, the report is in its folder. It's because the report is an it. It isn't a he or a she. Next page, 303, number five. When the antecedent is two or more nouns joined by and, use a plural pronoun. James and Clark will give their report next week. You got James and Clark joined by and, so therefore the pronoun has to be there because there's more than one, James and Clark. However, look at number six. When the antecedent is two or more nouns joined by or, use a pronoun that agrees with the noun near the pronoun. So, 
Let's look at the singular sentence. Did Leon or Roy forget his cue? Because Leon and Roy are joined by or, not and, you have to use the singular. You have to make it agree with the one closest. So Roy is closer. He's a guy. He's he. He's one. Did Leon or Roy forget his cue, not their cue? That's what we'd all say, but there would be wrong. Look at the plural sentence. The sportscaster or the reviewers will give their reports on the game. We've got two subjects here joined by or, so it has to agree with the one close. Reviewers is plural, there is plural. But let's say I said the sportscaster or the reviewer. In this case, reviewer would be closer and it'd be just one, it'd be singular, so it would be the sportscaster or the reviewer will give his reports on the game. All right, let's do the try it out section right below you. Number one, oh, it says what's the correct pronoun and what's the antecedent? Number one, she or Mary is writing about William Spooner in her or their report for the class this week. All right, so we've got she and Mary joined by or. The rule is it has to agree with the one closer. Well, Mary is singular. So would it be she or Mary is writing about William Spooner in her report or in their report? The answer would be her. Number two, Spooner was known for his slips with language. He or they gave our vocabulary a new word. Well, what is the pronoun referring to? It's referring to Spooner. That's one guy. So it would be he. Spooner isn't a they. He's a, he's a he. Number three, once when escorting a lady to her seat, Spooner said, let me sew you to her or your sheet. Well, since you is the antecedent, we wouldn't say her, we would say your. Let me sew you to your sheet. Number four, this was one of his or her most famous Spoonerisms. Okay, well, who are we talking about? We're talking about Spooner. It's a guy. So, this was one of his most famous Spoonerisms. Number five. Don't laugh. A tongue twister may play its or their tricks on you someday. Well, let's find the antecedent. What is the antecedent? Tongue twister. Is that singular or plural? One. It's a tongue twister. So it should be a tongue twister may play its tricks on you someday. And number six. Lucy or the twins will give her or their report on language in English class next week. Okay, we've got two subjects joined by or, Lucy or the twins. So we have to make it agree with the one that's closer, which is twins. That's plural. There's more than one. There's two of them. So which is plural, her or their? Their. Lucy or the twins will give their report. All right. Let's go down to the next section, clear antecedents. We're still on page 303. Let's read number one. You can use pronouns to make your writing more interesting and smooth. However, you must make sure that the pronouns you use have clear antecedents. Here are four examples of unclear antecedents. Let's read them. They say that trash can be used as a source of energy. Well, Who's they? Mr. Lee and Mrs. Lee? Um, the insects down the street? Who's they? We don't know. Next one. They present a lot of ads on radio. Who does? The school districts? The teachers? The advertisers? Who? It says that liftoff will be at dawn tomorrow. What says? We don't know who it is. There's no clear antecedent. And last one. He learns from some TV shows. Well, who's he? Mr. Campbell? Mr. Lee? Mr. Foster? Tom? We don't know. All right. Let's keep reading. 
The sentences above contain pronouns with unclear antecedents. Who are they, it, and you? Try to avoid writing or saying sentences like these. Use nouns or different wording instead. Here are the same four sentences, but this time the pronouns are clear. Instead of saying, they say the trash, they say experts say that trash can be used as a form, source of energy. And instead, instead of saying they present a lot of ads, they said sponsors present a lot of ads on the radio. Be clear. Instead of saying it says that liftoff, the newspaper says that liftoff will be at dawn tomorrow. Instead of saying he learns from some TV shows, Stanley learns from some TV shows. Let's turn the page. Go over to number two on page 304. Be sure that the antecedent for each pronoun that you use is clear. <clears throat> Let's look at two, a sentence that's unclear. Dan interviewed Greg when he was in town. Well, who was, who's he? Who was in town? You mean when Dan was in town or Greg was in town? We don't know. <clears throat> so you got to make it clear. Here's three ways to do it. Dan interviewed Greg when Dan was in town, or Dan interviewed Greg when Greg was in town, that's two different meanings, or when Dan was in town, he interviewed Greg. Now there's no confusion. All right, let's do the try it out section there on page 304. It says, how would you correct the unclear pronoun antecedents in these sentences? Number seven. They say that only one main rule for writing headlines exists. Okay, what's the unclear antecedent or the, the unclear pronoun in here? They. Who's they? Who says that only one main rule exists? So let's make up something. Who might say that one main rule for writing it? Headlines. Who writes headlines? Maybe newspaper reporters. So we could say newspaper reporters say that it that only one main rule for writing headlines exists. Number eight, they must tell a story accurately. What's the unclear pronoun? They. What must tell a story accurately? Well, what did we talk about in sentence seven? The headlines. So, number eight should say, headlines must tell a story accurately. Number nine, it should not, however, tell the whole story. What shouldn't tell the whole story? What's it? Let's make it clear. The headline should not, however, tell the whole story. Number 10. You should want to read past the headline. All right, you. This is unclear. Who is you? This is a problem that a lot of you guys used in your research papers. You can't really use you in your research papers. It's act like you're talking to me and because I'm you to you. So don't use you if, whenever you can. So who should want to read past the headline? Readers. Readers should want to read past the headline. Number 11. If the headline of a story is too long, it spoils it. Okay. What are the its? What spoils what? Let's be clear. Let's say if a headline of a story is too long, the headline spoils the story. Or... If the headline of a story is too long, it spoils the story. That would clear it up. All right, let's go back. Let's go down to On Your Own, and we're just going to do these out loud. I will read both choices, give you a minute to guess in your head, and then I'll give you the answer. Number 12, how do newspapers get their or its money? All right, so you have to think, what is the antecedent here for their or its? The antecedent is newspapers. That's plural. Which pronoun is right? How do newspapers get their money? Number 13, they or you get money from ads and daily sales. Well, you got to think again. What gets money from ads and daily sales? Do you get money from ads and daily sales? No. We're talking about the newspapers. So, that's plural, so we should have they. They get money from ads and daily sales. Number 14, my brother and I enjoy reading the daily paper. He or we would like to be reporters. 
Well, you got to look back to see what is the antecedent. Our antecedents are brother and I. That's two people, so it's we. We would like to be reporters. Number 15. In his or their dreams, my brother writes about world events. Okay, we got to look at the word that it, his or their refers to. And it's brother. Is my brother one or two people? One. So it should be in his dreams, my brother writes about world events. Top of page 305, number 16. I, however, think that our or my specialty would be sports. All right, so let's look back at our antecedent. Well, we have I in this sentence. I is your antecedent. So I doesn't suddenly become our. It would be I, however, think that my specialty would be sports. Number 17. Sheila and Nancy think that who should write about basketball? Well, you got two people here, and it's joined by Anne, so it's plural. Sheila and Nancy think that they would write about basketball. And last one, number 18. This is my favorite newspaper. Their sports page or its sports page is the best. Well, we got to think what sentence is referring to here. Newspaper, is that a they or an it? A newspaper is an it. So, this is my favorite newspaper. Its sports page is the best. All right. Now, a little bit, just a little bit more instruction, and then I'll be done. Uh, what do I want to do here? I want to do this. going to turn the lights off so maybe that would be a little clearer. There's a glare. I don't know how to get that glare off of there. It's still there. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, you see how I make that a little bigger. And again, we still have glare. Okay. June, June told Margie that she lacked self-confidence. Who lacks self-confidence? June or Margie? June mean man I lack self-confidence you got to be clear to fix it you could say something like this June told Margie you lack self-confidence now we know who's the one that's insecure it's Margie in the first sentence we didn't know who it was we didn't know if June was feeling insecure or if it was Margie all right let's look at another one Nancy's mother is a hairdresser, but Nancy is not interested in it. There's no specific word that it refers to. It would not make sense to say Nancy is not interested in hairdresser. So instead, you could say, oops, where'd it go? You could say, Nancy's mother is a hairdresser, but Nancy is not interested in being Humming one. Now that makes sense. All right, one more example. Ron blamed the police officer for the ticket, which was foolish. Does which mean that the officer's giving the ticket was foolish or that Ron's blaming the op officer was foolish? Be clear. Instead, say, as soon as I find it here, foolishly, Ron blamed the police officer for the ticket. Now we know who was being foolish. All right. And then one more thing, a problem that I see a lot in your papers 
is when you switch back and forth from pronouns. You're inconsistent. Take a look at this one. I enjoy movies like The Return of the Vampire that frighten you. Well, you started with I. Why did you switch to you? But people do that all the time. The way to fix that is just to keep your pronouns consistent. Say, I enjoy movies like The Return of the Vampire that frighten me. Me and I go together. All right, let's look at another example. As soon as a person walks into Helen's apartment, you can tell that Helen owns a cat. Okay, we went from a person to you. You wouldn't say that. A person is a he or a she. So you can't switch. You could say as soon as you walk into an apartment, you can tell, but don't switch from you, person to you. So the correction would be as soon, you can't see that. Probably still can't. As soon as a person walks into Helen's apartment, he or she can tell that Helen owns a cat. This, is, this goes with person. He or she goes with person, not you. All right. That was probably not all that great, but hopefully it will help. your assignment up here for a minute so you can see it. Uh, there it comes. And I'm going to make it as big as I can. The assignment that you're going to have to do, and you can't really see it very well, what would happen if I can I? All right. This is a glare. It says, rewrite each of the following sentences to make clear the vague pronoun reference. Add, leave out words as necessary. Okay, so our example says, our cat was friends with our hamster until he bit him. Who bit who? Did the cat bite the hamster or did the cat hamster bite the cat? So to make it clear, you say, until the cat bit the hamster, the two were friends. All right? So in this first one that you have to do here, let me scroll down a little if I can. Maria's mother let her wear her new earrings to school. All right, we don't know whose earrings they are and we don't know, uh, we don't know who this who her is and we don't know this her. So you got to make it clear. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. I'll let you figure it out. Well, let's see. You might say, Maria's mother let Maria wear Maria's new earrings to school. That would fix that one. Then there are some more that you have to do. Down in the bottom part of the worksheet, Is underline inconsistent pronouns in the following sentences and write the correct pronoun after each sentence. So, example, my dreams are always the kind that haunt you the next day. Well, see, we started with my, a first person pronoun, and then we switched to you. That's wrong. So, on your paper, you're going to underline the word that's wrong, and it should, and then at the end, type out the answer. My dreams are always the kind that haunt me the next day. So number one, I cannot see that. I don't know how to get it so you can see it. Whenever we take our children on a trip, you have to remember to bring snacks, tissues, and toys. All right, so we start out here with we, and all of a sudden we got you. So we should say instead, whenever we take our children on a trip, we 
have to remember to bring snacks, tissues, and toys. So you're going to want to underline this and then at the end type we. And then the last section says underline the correct word in parentheses. You can't see it still. Maybe down at the bottom you can see it better. Let me move it back down. Yeah, it's clear down there. All right, so as we sat in class waiting for the test results, you could feel the tension or we could feel the tension. Well, we started with we, so let's stay with we. Okay, pretty easy. Um, and I should pull this one back down. The one I just did, you see that better? Whenever we take our children on a trip, we have to remember. All right, and the first one we did. Maria's mother let her wear her new earrings to school. Maria's mother let Maria wear uh, her mother's new earrings to school or Maria's new earrings to school. Make it clear. Okay, let me get the lights back on. So what I have on the screen right now is your homework. You will find that in, uh, it'll be a, it'll be on the, um, it'll be attached to this lesson. And you can just go to edit and type your answers. Well, this is the end of class, just like normal. <laughs> I'm always explaining the homework as the bell rings. Um, you can just edit this and type your answer straight on here if you want to. All right, that's it. Thanks for being with me today, and I hope all this is clear for you. Bye-bye.